today we're going to visit some of your questions from YouTube. We got questions coming in on our videos that we're going to go ahead and answer for you today. This question comes in from Patricio Tolano. He writes, my actuator is completely free when taken apart. I put it back together and it will not move at all. What's going on? Is the nozzle not properly lined up with the shroud? Is my turbo bad? Well, basically on your VGD turbos, you've got a couple components. Uh, one would be the electronic portion of that turbo, uh, which is gonna be your actuator. And then you've got your mechanical portion uh, inside the turbo, your, uh, your, your vanes and your shroud plate. So uh, typically if your actuator is bad, you're gonna have fault codes relating to your actuator. Uh, it's an electronic device, so that will give you uh, an electronic feedback to the ECM saying that, hey, this is bad or that's bad. Um, now what we're, what we're talking about here uh, sounds to be like the mechanical portion of that turbocharger, um, your vanes and your, and your shroud plate. If your vanes have any type of debris on them or get bent at all, uh, the vanes have a hard time traveling through the shroud plate, so that could cause a problem. Uh, one of the things is if you take that exhaust housing off, you're taking the shroud plate with the exhaust housing, uh, which is absolutely going to free up your, your vane to move in and out freely because it's not trying to travel through the shroud plate. So if those vanes get bent at all, uh, they're not going to want to travel through that shroud plate very free. So in this case, it sounds like you may have something going on with your turbocharger causing it to malfunction. So for our next question today, Eric Myro writes in, I have a 2015 Kenworth with a Packar MX-13. All of a sudden it loses power for a little bit and then it comes back again. On the computer it says data erratic and sometimes it says VGT actuator one. What do you guys think? Well, Eric, I would tell you that we'd probably break this down into two possibilities. Uh, we could have a mechanical problem or we could have an electrical problem. So the, the trick is to, um, to, to take that code and determine uh, if, it's, if it's referring to an electrical problem or a mechanical problem. And that information, we just don't have enough here to, to determine exactly what it is. But on your turbocharger, uh, you've got an ECM that's controlling an actuator. Um, that ECM sends a signal out to your actuator uh, telling it that, hey, the engine needs more air, so you need to move 30 degrees. It, it sends a five volt signal out, and then it gets a reference back, uh, something less than five volts. Um, if it sends five volts out, it's supposed to move 30 degrees, and it's supposed to get, uh, say, three volts back, but it's only getting uh, one or two volts back. Now your comp computer is throwing a code saying, hey, I sent this voltage out and I expect this voltage back. We're not moving where we're supposed to be, and that throws a code. Or you could have something going on uh, mechanically. Uh, so something in the turbo may be binding or, or locking up, and your ECM is telling it, hey, here's where we need to be, and it can't get there physically uh, because of uh, uh, the carbon in the system, whether it's got bent fins in the actuator, uh, whatever it may be, mechanically it can't get there. Uh, so we really need to break this problem down and determine, is our problem mechanical? or is our problem electrical? And a little bit more information would help us there, but uh, you know you can probably take that system, get your fault code, figure out exactly what's going on there, and determine, hey, hey, I got an electrical problem or I got a mechanical problem. Got an electrical problem, it could be wiring, it could be a short circuit in the system, it could be wires rubbed through, uh, many possibilities there. Um, if it's a mechanical problem, um, you may have a, this, this just is physically broken when you get it apart, or, or binding or sticking, and that would be um, something that would lead you to the mechanical side. Our next question comes from Jeff Gifford. He writes in, I have a 2014 Ram 3500 with a 6.7, and I get a code for an actuator. I did drain the coolant and remove the actuator to see if it was a turbo. The turbo arm moves without crazy force, but does have a little resistance. How do I determine if it's the turbo or the actuator? So with this system and this turbo, um, you, you're kind of headed in the right track. You want to divide that system up. Uh, you've got an electronic actuator, you've got a mechanical turbo. Uh, they come together to make, uh, make something that works seamlessly, typically. Um, so to de determine which one of those is the problem, um, you may want to get the laptop hooked up to the truck 
and check the actuator. You got it off the turbocharger, you can command that actuator uh, to, to do its full cycle and to calibrate uh, to make sure the actuator is uh, not giving you problems. The next step is uh, the turbocharger. So the turbocharger, when you say it moves without crazy force, uh, we know that turbocharger has a certain range that the sector gear needs to move, um, and it has to move fairly freely. Um, it should move without binding, without sticking, uh, from, from stop to stop. And that's going to be uh, determined by how free that thing moves, uh, the veins move through the shroud plate. Uh, when we get into uh, problems with the turbocharger, uh, the, the vein pack and shroud plate are on the exhaust side of that turbo, so they see a lot of abuse, uh, whether it's from carbon buildup from EGR systems, you got an EGR valve that's failed, an EGR cooler that's leaking coolant, um, do you got injectors that are overfueling, causing excessive carbon in that system. Uh, so excessive carbon can build up, uh, it can get sucked back around in the intake, out the exhaust, and when something hits that, uh, that shroud plate uh, coming out of there, uh, at the speed it comes out, it can actually bend the veins in there. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, excessive carbon buildup, maybe not even, um, maybe not even hitting the veins, but uh, say overfueling injectors or injectors that aren't atomizing properly, uh, cause an excessive carbon in the exhaust. Uh, you might not see that in your tailpipe with uh, today's engines with DPF filters and such catching that. Uh, but obviously the turbo is the first thing that it sees before it gets clean. So that carbon can build up inside your turbo. And sometimes it's as simple as pulling the exhaust housing off and cleaning the carbon out of it, get it free, make it run smooth. Um, if it's not bent, damaged, or broken, then you know just a cleaning can get that thing back together. But ultimately what you're gonna wanna find is, is it electrical, is it mechanical? and then get to the root cause of the problem. The turbo is the result of the problem typically, um, but the root cause will be deeper within the engine. Is it your injectors are not atomizing properly, your EGR cooler is failing, your EGR valve is sticking, uh, stuff like that are most likely causes for uh, VGT issues on your 6.7. Um, the next thing is, if it is an actuator that's failed, you might think about getting the turbo and actuator as a unit. Uh, the actuators don't seem to be as strong on that particular turbo as some of the others, and they don't fare well with resistance. Uh, so if you get a lot of carbon buildup and you really work the electronic motor in that actuator, uh, that may be a failure point that's caused by uh, the base engine problem. So um, you may have a bad actuator and a dirty turbo, uh, but go back and get the root cause of the problem to get that figured out. So our next question comes in from Dexter Miranda. He writes, my 2014 Ram 6.7 has an actuator failure. I was getting 14 pounds of boost at best. I replaced the oil and used three quarts of Marvel Mystery Oil and I got an increase of three PSI with the new oil from August. A new actuator is expensive. I saw your video on how turbo fins fit into a slot and I'm wondering if that may be what's going on with mine. That particular turbo, um, when we're looking at um, I, what kind of, what, what part does oil play in this uh, diagnosis here, um, that turbo is only going to use the oil for lubrication of the bearings. Um, if we've got a situation where the lubrication of the bearings um, increases 3 PSI by putting Marvel Mystery Oil in it, uh, we got big problems with that turbocharger. So, um, my guess is that might be coincidence and the oil really doesn't have a lot to do with it. So uh, put the oil aside for right now and go back to finding out what's going on with your turbo. Um, so with that turbo, your uh, engine control module is, um, is taking input from a bunch of sensors and it's telling the engine that, hey, I need more air. Uh, so it sends a signal out to the, to the actuator that says, all right, put me in a position where I can generate more air. Um, if you've got a mechanical problem uh, going on inside your turbo, uh, carbon buildup, bent veins, uh, something of that nature, where the mechanical portion of the turbo cannot physically move because of an obstruction, uh, your engine is telling that actuator, you got to move, you got to move, you got to move, but it can't move. So it's very likely that it could burn up the actuator uh, due to a base turbo problem. 
Uh, so what we want to do is, number one, you can hook the actuator up to, to the computer with it disconnected from, uh, from the turbocharger and you can test the actuator, see what's going on with it. Um, the next thing is uh, take, take the lever, uh, the sector gear on your turbocharger, make sure it moves freely from stop to stop. If it doesn't move freely, we got to get the turbocharger off there. Um, you can potentially take the exhaust housing off your turbocharger, make sure you mark it so you know where it goes back on, and determine if the vein pack is damaged or broken. Uh, you, you can have bent fins in it and it, it may not fit through the shroud plate. Uh, you can have such carbon buildup on it that it just can't move through the shroud plate. Uh, so that would be the next step in trying to determine what exactly is going on there. Um, it could be either one of those pieces causing you issues with low boost pressure, but um, you got to get, the, hey, is it, is it electrical, is it mechanical, or is it both? Uh, either one of those situations could be the problem with this particular turbocharger. So it's kind of dig in and, and see what you got there. So hopefully answering these questions helped you to get your engine back on the road. If you need parts or assistance, give us a shout at 844-447-1453 and make sure you hit that like and subscribe button on Facebook and YouTube to stay up to date with the latest from Highway and Heavy Parts. From diagnosis through delivery, we're Highway and Heavy Parts.